Hello, beautiful, and welcome to the Think Truth podcast, where we are learning to align our mind with God's truth so that we can live a more grace-filled, Christ-like life. So today I want to talk about identifying and dis- and addressing distractions, because just as weeds or other obstacles in a garden prevent plants from thriving, distractions in our lives can divert our focus away from spiritual growth and our relationship with God. We have to recognize and address these distractions. And this is crucial for preparing our hearts to fully engage with God. So at first thought, you could think distractions as in social media, your phone. Your phone is a huge distraction, but there's so much more to it. And not all distractions are physical activities or a physical object. Many are emotional and mental. Some are even people in our lives. So one thing for me is my children. They have lots of needs and I need to care for them. When my children distract me, that's not a sin. However, because I'm not ridding myself of all of the other unnecessary distractions in my life, I can get frustrated and feel like they're interrupting me And that can lead to overwhelm or frustration, right? So we don't want to do that. So we need to simplify things in our lives so we're not easily distracted. One thing that you may not think of about distraction is overbooking. We cannot overbook. We cannot overcommit ourselves. We need to undercommit ourselves, in fact. Um, We need to make sure that we have a balance of work and balance of home. We need to make sure that we're putting God first. And so overbooking can very easily become a distraction. We also can have environmental distractions, which are like noise and even clutter. Clutter in our life can clutter our mind and our thoughts and distract us and keep us away from our relationship with God. We can also be distracted by social media, which is a fairly obvious one, right? We want to stay informed about other people's lives. We want to stay informed about what's going on in the news and things like that. But really, do we need to? Do we need to be informed about what's going on in Cousin Lucy's life or Aunt Sally's life? Do we need to know those things Or do we need to prioritize God and not let those things be a distraction? What if we only checked Facebook once a week? Wow, that would be amazing, right? Once a week. What if we only did that once a week? What if we only checked Instagram once a week? We would have so much more time to focus on our relationship with God and with the people that he has put into our life. So some of the things that are emotional distractions are perfectionism, comparison, worry, negative thinking, dwelling on certain things, emotional baggage, pride, isolation, and overthinking. These are things that keep us away from our relationship with God. So we have to be willing to let those things go. We have to have a balance with those things. When we are focused on dwelling in unhealthy emotions, those thoughts affect our ability to connect with God because we are thinking about me. We are me focused and we are not God focused. And I've talked about that a lot recently In order to grow closer to God and be more like Christ, we have to be able to keep our focus on the greatness of God and take it away from our circumstances. So if we are carrying or dwelling on unhealthy emotions, we are thinking about ourselves. We are not thinking about God. So we have to learn to let those emotions go. Take every thought captive for Christ. We have to be careful with how much we work. I work from home. So I have family and home things I've neglected 
because I'm focusing on my ministry. Now, my ministry is important and I'm very blessed by it, but it affects my ability to connect with God because he's not getting the glory if I am spending too much time in my ministry and not enough time ministering to my family. So you have to have a work-life balance. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 in the NIV says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So the author of Hebrews, we do not know who the author of Hebrews is, but what he is saying to the believers in this time, the Jewish believers in this time, is throw off. Throw off. Think about that word, throw off. In the original Greek language, it means to lay off or set aside, to renounce or cast off. The NLT uses the phrase strip off. The ESV says lay aside. The NASB says rid ourselves. And the Amplified says stripping off. So I want you to actually visualize yourself taking off, removing, stripping, ridding, laying aside, renouncing, throwing off everything that hinders everything that's a distraction and hinders you. I want you to throw it off because that sin, it says so easily entangles us. So easily entangles us. It hinders us. And in the original Greek language, hinders is a mass as a boundary or bulging by its load, a burden. The NLT says it slows us down. And the Amplified says it's unnecessary weight. So we are pulling around these things that hinder us and entangle us. And we need to throw them off. Then the author says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I want you to visualize this. I want you to close your eyes and visualize this. You are throwing off everything that hinders you, every sin that entangles you. And the reason why you want to throw those off is you don't want that unnecessary weight on you. I want you to picture yourself running with perseverance. Run, run. The race marked out for you. There is a race marked out for you by the almighty sovereign God of the universe. And you cannot do what he has for you if you are allowing the sins of distractions to weigh you down. So I'd like you to make sure that you really evaluate the distractions in your life and how they affect your ability to connect with God. Does it cause you to miss Bible reading or prayer time? You need to spend some time in this. And we did this in step one of my growth workbook. So if you are interested in that, make sure you go to the link down in the show notes and check that out because it really works through this process so we can prepare our hearts to be with God, whether it's in prayer or Bible study or Bible reading, whatever it is, we want to make sure that we have thrown off everything that hinders us. You are beautiful and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.